to my channel in our video today we'll be looking at risk assessment within the ISO 27001 framework um, before we go into the video please remember that these videos are created for educational purposes only so this is um, agenda for today risk assessment what is risk assessment a risk assessment within the ISO 27001 framework the steps in risk assessment and the methodology and uh, lastly our conclusion so the reason I wanted to look into risk assessment within the ISO 27001 or 27k for short uh, framework is because it is widely adopted through many companies uh, within uh, different countries and also that uh, risk assessment is uh, I wanted to look at it from an from a security from an information security angle so I think the ISO 27k certificate or framework is the best one to look into when looking at risk assessment within the information security um, sort of you know um, framework Um, it's worth noting that the methodology used for ISO 27K certification can be applied to the business as a whole as well. So what I mean by this is we would be looking at um, information uh, risk assessment for information security, but you could apply this the same methodology on a bigger scale to cover the whole of the business or um, anything which is outside of information security and uh, you would end up with a risk register which would have all the risk listed for uh, for a company for the business as a whole although when looking at risk assessment you do look at a significant amount of risk uh, within the company so let's get into it so what do we mean by risk assessment? I'll look at risk assessment in an information security con within an information security context, but I would like to point out that, as I said in my previous um, slide, that you could apply it to the business as a whole as well. So when looking at the risk assessment of a business, we'll have to consider, to put into plain terms, things that can go wrong within the business and how. Uh, the damage can be minimized. The likelihood of such events will be examined and rated. The results of such a process will then be expressed in a quantitative or qualitative manner which senior or higher management can use to make decisions or important business decisions. Uh, it would help to have, uh, it would also help with uh, to have a budget allocated for this risk and also identify the areas where um, you would need more attention or you need to spend more of your time uh, to make sure that if those risks do come to life or do happen you are prepared for them any unwanted or unplanned events will have a negative impact on a business so what is the end result of a risk assessment Following the risk assessment exercise, the business should be able to determine the level of risk it is happy to operate at and also most importantly to identify what controls, what control measures have to be set in place to mitigate uh, those risk. So looking at risk assessment within the ISO 27K framework so the ISO 27K framework, it takes a more holistic approach when it comes to risk assessments and the standard takes a risk-based approach to information security which requires the business to identify the information security risk and also select the appropriate controls to treat those risks. Uh, Annex A of, um, of the certification of a framework provides a list of controls. It is important to note that the ISO 27K certification is not fully uh, IT focused, but instead it brings into the equation 
um, other areas of risk such as, such as physical security, legal protection, etc., along with uh, IT to secure information. So the ISMS, which is the Information Security Management System, is um, so, you know, the system you would you would implement and uh, as a whole for the ISO 27K framework. So I think I think it's very simple. I think a very simple way of explaining the importance of Annex A in risk management is to think of it as a list of security controls based on your risk assessment that apply to your business. This will then be recorded into your statement of applicability. As I am sure um, everyone is aware, here is familiar with um, the statement of applicability it would uh, it gives you a list of, um, sort of, you know, of applicable controls out of 114 one uh, controls listed in Annex A, which is applicable to your business, and state which one has been implemented or why others have been omitted. So a continual improvement of the ISMS. The ISO 27K framework requires a continual improvement of a business's ISMS. So what do we mean by, by this? A clause 9.3 9 states that top management shall review the business's ISMS at, at planned intervals to ensure its continuity, its continuing suitability, so it, it, it's still be, being relevant to the business, uh, adequate and also effective. The frequency depends on um, hugely on various factors as the size of the business, the number of employees, and when do uh, so, you know, the compliance manager or higher management feel that there's a need for it to be reviewed. It, this would need a bit of common sense as well, and it, it would judge based on the size of the business. But it should at least be carried out uh, once a year. And reviewing the ISMS would involve reviewing the risk register, the control set in place, and the risk a treatment plan. The business has to ensure that the mitigating controls identified are still effective. So the methodologies of risk assessment. The ISO 27K framework will require a business to document the process of risk assessment, thus in clause uh, 6.12, I believe, uh, which is usually defined in your risk assessment methodology or process. It's important to note that the ISO 27K does not require a risk policy, just the methodology to be used in your risk assessment process. So deciding on whether to have a risk policy depends hugely again on the business and the size of a business. Having a risk assessment methodology document should be your starting point, and that is before implementing the risk assessment. I'll go into more details into it, but the methodology should cover the three important principles of information security, that is maintaining confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the information. This is also known as the CIA triad. So your approach taken to risk treatment should cover the those three elements of information security and address the any CIA-based risk. Uh, I'll cover this a, uh, a bit in the coming slides. So the steps in uh, risk assessment methodology. So looking at um, GDPR and risk assessment. So even though we are looking at risk assessment within the ISO 27K framework, we have to ensure that it complies with the EU General Data Protection Regulation. In short, the EU GDPR, if you are processing any data of EU citizens, I appreciate that this won't apply to everyone, but if that does apply to you, it's something which you have to look into. Conducting uh, a risk assessment is also a requirement of the EU GDPR, so it can be carried out out of the ISO 27K uh, risk assessment exercise, or you could choose to have it as a separate exercise for GDPR. But I think it's time consuming. It's time consuming to have. Um, to run both where the end result would be very similar. So you might as well do it with your ISO 27K 
um, framework. So you have to remember that also the guidelines are very closely aligned for GDPR, EU GDPR, and the ISO 27K. So it just makes more sense to have them together. So the process or methodology of risk assessment. This is the starting point when you carry out your risk assessment exercise. The methodology used will hugely depend on your requirement. That is the size of your business. It is very important to adapt it to your needs. Nowadays, it is very, very easy to go online and search for templates and use them. But on the other hand, it's very important we understand what your business needs. I have previously used Excel sheets when setting out my risk assessment and risk treatment plan, and this has worked perfectly for me. There are softwares which you can buy, and um, but if you're a small organization, I would recommend Excel as a as a starting point, and it works well. Just get yourself familiar with how to use Excel, and it's, it's a very important tool for me, and. It, Best of all, you know, you don't have to spend anything for it apart from the license of your C4 Microsoft. But, you know, I would say uh, I would recommend Excel for smaller uh, companies. So the risk assessment methodology needs to address issues such as your information security requirements and risk scale and your risk appetite. So let's look at the elements of risk assessment. First, you have to identify the risk. This is the first um, step, and there are various methods to do so, but I have only used an asset-based identification method, which I prefer and is widely regarded as the best, pra as best practice. So you have choice, but uh, the asset-based uh, identify identification method, I think, um, is you know, in, in practice, you know, it, it works. Uh, you will need to list your information asset relating to risk information security. You will then list the likely threats and vulnerabilities related to those assets, which will allow you to calculate the level of risk. Once this has been identified, you will then assess the potential impact and likelihood of each of those, of those risks. This can be based on previous risk or from other organizations within um, the same company, the same industry, sorry. And the exercise has the potential of revealing risk which may not have been previously identified or discussed. My advice is to keep it as simple as uh, possible as uh, senior management would probably want to go through uh, this document as well. It's a very, very useful document for them. Uh, to to use when, for example, allocating uh, budgets for each department or just knowing where the company is in general. And you can calculate the risk uh, as, as follows. Uh, risk would equal uh, impact and uh, plus likelihood, or it could be risk equal impact times likelihood is whichever there's no right or wrong method is what you feel is is best for you to use and uh, this would be the results of your of a level of risk assessment and uh, you can use this as an example so that's a way for you to score it uh, higher end uh, like a higher score would mean where your risk are very high and within a lower score would mean that uh, you've got a low risk or medium risk. And as a company, you have to decide the level of risk you are comfortable with and uh, one which is acceptable by a senior management. And here's an example of a risk uh, table. So I prefer to keep it simple and easy to read. As I said, you know, this document would be used by other um, members of staff as well who might not be, who might understand risk assessment in detail. So try to keep it simple. And um, 
also I would say other stakeholders as well outside external stakeholders also would probably want to see this document at some point so again uh, keep it simple but informative so risk uh, ownership so risk ownership is it, it can be included in, as an extra column within your your documents and the risk owner will will be an accountable point of contact for a particular risk. It's important to note that it's not a finger pointing exercise or blaming exercise. It's just rather to have someone uh, who ensures that the risk is mitigated and manages the risk. A risk implementation. And once you've identified your risk and set your methodology or process, you will now list the threats and vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities and your risk and your treatment plan so your treatment plan is um, is where you will need to work with various departments of your business to mitigate your risk and bring it to an acceptable level this means that having this means having a proper mitigation uh, factors in place having proper mitigation factors in place some of the ways to mitigate your risk could be for example, to have an insurance policy to cover high risk or to avoid this activity if it becomes too risky. In some in instances, the business will have to accept the risk where the cost of mitigation could be higher than the damage caused by the risk itself. So again, it's a lot of common sense as well. So your, info, your risk assessment report. This is a part where you will have to document your risk assessment process so far. And um, this can be a daunting process, but it's, it's, it's something which is essential and not only for the auditor, but for, like I said, for business stakeholders or for senior management. The report will also include your plan of action and the review process. One thing to remember is the risk identified will change over time or with new developments within the business. So the main uh, documents out of the exercise would be your statement of applicability, your risk assessment report, and your risk treatment plan. The statement of applicability is important as it lists the control that you will have, but you will you will imp the controls you would have implemented or which you think doesn't uh, need to be implemented. The risk assessment report and the treatment plan which I believe can be combined, again, depending on the size of a business, um, can be combined into one document. So we'll give you an overview of each identified risk and the treatment applied to it. So it brings us to the end of our video. And um, just a couple of points I would like to, um, to mention. So it doesn't have to be a complex exercise, but rather it's an insight on what events might affect your business. It's also important that each department of a business is consulted when carrying out this task. So you will, be, I, as you might not be aware of all the potential risks which affect your business. Uh, an example would be if you work in, um, in, let's take any company for example, where you've got your HR department and you as a compliance or risk assessor, as a compliance manager or risk assessor for your business, you might not be aware of all the risk around HR. So it's, it's good to speak to the head of HR or senior member of, member of HR of the HR department. So to be able to identify all, the, all, the, all those risks and also apply mitigate, mitigation uh, method, mitigation um, a treatment, uh, apply you, or any mitigation factors within your treatment plan. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's not a one-person exercise. It would have to involve a, sort of, you know, a high to senior management within each department and working together. So this, so I hope you've, you've enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. If you do uh, have any comments or questions, uh, you've got my email at the beginning of, of the slides of the video. So just uh, drop me an email. And don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope to see you on the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.